Okay, POA, here we go with the homework 3.6 for Monday. Uh, of course, due tomorrow, the, the sound you're hearing behind me is Percy Jackson and the Olympians is playing all over the intercoms. I can't get to a quiet place, so we're just going to have to deal with it. But hey, that's how it works sometimes. So um, let's take a look at these tables, and we have to kind of deal with them as rules. Um, get out of here, Mr. Boswick. Okay. Um, so here's kind of something to consider is that we have to deal with this as a sentence and as a rule. Uh, and the way to kind of process that is when you say read as a sentence, we just really mean write this in words. And of course, when we mean uh, as a rule, we mean write it as an equation. Okay. So it, it sounds very intimidating that you have to write it in more than one way and then you're saying the sentence, but um, again, they're just kind of having you process this both verbally and then visually. And that's something we're going to be okay with. Um, so we have to kind of figure out what the process is and the way to do that is to kind of pick the right entry point. And if we can pick the right entry point for our rule, um, I'm sorry, for input and output for x and our y, then we can probably figure out the rule pretty fast. So here's what I mean. Uh, my entry point is going to actually be this value right here, it's 0. And the reason why, um, I know that if I start with a 0 and then end up with a negative 3, starting with a 0 means, although I might have multiplied or divided at some point, it actually has no effect on my problem. So if it has no effect on my problem, I know the only way to go from a 0 to a negative 3 is by subtracting 3 at some point. Now, that's not the only story, but I know that if I have to subtract negative 3 for the first rule, I have to subtract negative 3 everywhere. So this gets me part of my rule kind of taken care of. From here now, I just have to, have to consider, well, I'm starting, say, with like a 2, and I have to get to a negative 9, knowing I'm, I'm subtracting 3 at some point. So I know I need to overshoot it. So like if I t start with a 2, do something to it, then end up subtracting 3, end up at a 9, at some point, uh, I have to have gotten a 12. Okay? And the reason why is because 12 minus 3 is 9, right? 9, 10, 12. So the real question is, how do I start with a 2 and then get to a 12? And I'm just making a guess here. I think I can probably accomplish that by multiplying by 6. So I'm going to kind of guess at a rule here. And the, guess, the rule I'm guessing at is if I take 6 times my input number, which in this case is a 2, this much of it gets me... Well, this much of it gives me 12, minus 3 gives me 9. Now, I don't know if that's actually the rule, but it gives me at least something to test. And that's something all we really have to do when we get to, uh, I'm sorry, uh, something that um, what we can do to actually get a rule. So I'm going to be selective. I'm not going to go with the negative yet, because that might end up confusing me. I'm going to go with this negative 1 and just see if my rule works. I notice I'm copying the same thing down from the upper process, because all I'm going to do is change the input value to a 1 and see if it works. 6 times 1 is 6. Track 3 is 3. I think we're in business here, guys. Uh, so let's see what works for this one. Well, 6 times 6 is 36. Subtract 3 is 33. Uh, this gives me strong evidence that this rule is actually accurate. 6 times negative 3 is negative 18. Take away 3 more, I'm at negative 21. I think we got ourselves a rule here, guys. We have 6 times 0 is 0. Subtract 3, you got negative 3. So let's write this rule two different ways. Let's first write it as a sentence. So if, you take, if I take my input, my multiplier times by 6, then subtract 3, I get the output. Okay, it's a sentence. You say, well, it's a sentence, okay? Anyway, so let's, let's continue again. So again, I have to choose a good entry point, and you're probably going to guess where I'm going. It's going to be with this. So this tells me something very valuable. This tells me that I'm not, in any way, shape, or form, uh, having any addition or subtraction. And the reason why I know that is because if I subtract anything from zero, I won't be at zero. So this is going to be a straight up, like, multiply or divide or something. Okay, so uh, let's, again, I'm going to skip the negatives. Again, it's all about entry point. I'm going to deal with this three. So I'm going to three, ending at 27. I know I can accomplish that by times nine. Um, except 5 times 9 is not 125, so I have to go back to the drawing board. Um, and again, I apologize that overhead, that is incredibly distracting. So I have to kind of think, well, how else can I go from 3 to 27? Well, I also know that if I take 3 times 3 times 3, I get 27. Now, that's the same thing as saying I have 3 cubed. And let's see what works for another one. If I take 5 times 5 times 5, wait a minute. 5 times 5 is 25, times another 5 is 125. I think I have some funny rule here, guys. I have 5 cubed. 
Now it does work here as well because zero cubed, zero times zero times zero, zero times itself three times, is going to be zero. Negative one cubed, okay, so that's going to be negative one times negative one times negative one is going to be negative one. I think we got it. Negative two times negative two times negative two is going to be a negative eight. Because um, again, three negatives multiplied together is indeed going to be uh, a negative. Okay, so let's write this rule in words. So if I take input times itself three times, I get output. Okay. Uh, so the rule, oh, I've got the rule up here. I'll go back and do the rule for the first one. I apologize. Uh, so the rule here is if I want the y value, which is going to be the output, i got to take the input, which is going to be x, and cube it. Okay. And up here, if I, take, if I want the output, which again is a y, I have to take the 6 times the input and then subtract 3. Now notice that's kind of what I was saying in class today. If you write out your process, the rule comes very naturally. In fact, if you look over at the process column on this first one, um, notice how every time we use the process, we always had this 6. We always had this minus 3. And if you look, those are two parts of the rule. And of course, we had the parentheses in the middle, which is placed on the input. Same thing here. Uh, we always had this cubed. Every single time, it showed up in the rule. What the variable just takes place of this input now number. Okay, so here we have a little tougher one because we don't have a, a zero entry point. Um, so my entry point is going to be uh, probably with a one, and I'll see I can, how I can take a negative a one to a negative one. So my first guess is going to be I'm going to have to take this one and then subtract two. Okay, now here for the three, that is not going to work because if I subtract two, I'm at one. So I have to go back to the drawing board and consider well, what else can I do. Okay. Um, sometimes when we're looking for a rule, patterns help. And uh, here's what I'm kind of seeing. Uh, now I'm going to kind of switch gears. I'm going to switch to search for patterns. This is plus two. I see over here uh, three. This is going to be what? Minus four. Okay. Here's another plus two. And here's another minus four. Okay, so that tells me that some, some version of negative 4 is probably going to be involved. Um, and since I know it's going down by that each time, I have a feeling it has to do, something to do like the rate of change or slope. Um, so let's take a look at this. If I take a 4 and multiply it by input 1, that gives me a 4. Then if I subtract 5 away from it, I get my negative 1. And again, I'm just guessing here. I don't know if that's actually part of the rule. Um, this is just me kind of guessing. Um, because, uh, ooh, hold on, let me back up. Again, I, I apologize, <laughs> this is very distracting overhead. Um, I'm sorry, if I take this negative 4 and multiply it by this 1, I get a negative 4. Okay. And if I want negative 1, I just have to add 3. And again, I'm just guessing at what this might be. I'm just using clues around me. Uh, the negative 4 over here is how I got this negative 4. And then the plus 3 is when I need to actually get to negative 1 after I multiply. And I'm just going to see if this works again. So I'm going to try the negative 4 plus 3 thing. Uh, but in this case, I'll put in 3. I don't know if this is going to work. Let's just find out. Negative 4 times 3 is going to be a negative 12 plus 3. No, that's not going to work either. Okay, so again, we didn't quite hit the mark here. We came close. We were closer because it worked once by the second time. Let's go back to the drawing board. Okay, so here's what I'm seeing. Um, this is going up by negative 4 every time this is going up by 2. So that's the same thing as saying, uh, and I'll write this down here. If something's going down by negative 4 at the same thing, something, something's going up by 2, that's the same thing as saying uh, I have something going down by 2 every time this goes up by 1. So I'm going to try this negative 2 and see if that helps at all. Okay, so we have this negative 2. Okay, so what if I affect my input by that? So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Okay, and then if I just simply add 1 to it, I should get my 1. So again, I'm just going to try that out. Uh, the rule should work for all, so this is a, trial, a pure trial and error process. Okay, so negative 2 times 3 would be a negative 6. Wait a minute, plus 1 gives me negative 5. That works. Okay, so let's see if that works again. 
So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna input this into all my spaces. Because so I know if this rule has to work, it has to work in all cases. Okay, so that's four, three point five, negative one. Let's test it. So I have a negative two times a negative one. Two negatives make a positive. So it's positive two. Add one is three. That works. Uh, we'll see. Three and a half times negative two. Well, hold on. Three and a half times two is seven. Make it negative. Makes it negative seven. Add one to it. We get a negative six. So that works as well. Negative two times four is negative eight plus one negative seven. So we stumbled upon this rule, you guys. Now that one was tough. No kidding. And we'll show you techniques to help you kind of think through the way I was thinking through. Uh, but for you, probably at this point, is a little trial error, and that's okay. Okay, so what's the rule? If I want the output, I have to take the input times negative 2, then add 1 for the output. Then if I want the rule, I have y is equal to negative 2x plus 1, okay? Now, let me keep in mind that these are always the same way, or same, different ways to say the same exact thing. Okay, let's talk about Nathan and his brother, Zach. Oh, they, let's play video games. I like to play video games. Right now, Nathan's score is 11 less than 2 times Zach's score. For example, if Zach has 80 points, then Nathan has 149 points, find 4 possibilities of his brother's scores and fill in the table below. Then write the rule where they need to score to Zach's score. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do that first. And I think, you know, the reason why is I think it's going to help me process through um, what to actually put in my table. So if we can say things in words and as an equation, we should be able to take this rule in words and write it as an equation. Okay, so check this out. So Nathan's score is, so Nathan's score is, keyword being is, Nathan will make it N. So Nathan's score is, is makes an equal sign, yeah? 11 less, 11 less is subtract 11, and then 2 times Zach's score should be 2z. So from the top, Nathan's score is 11 less than 2 times Zach's score. So using that as a rule, as a process, I should be able to figure out as many entries as I want. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is actually fill in all these parts of the process. So 2 Zach score minus 11, 2 Zach score minus 11, 2 Zach score minus 11, 2 Zach score minus 11. And now it's just a matter of picking values that I want to pick. So uh, let's say he scored 10, so 10 goes here. Uh, 2 times 10 is 20, minus 11 makes 9. Uh, we can go 100, let's get crazy. 200 minus 11 should be, uh, so it's 200, right? Minus 11 should be uh, 189. Uh, let's go 50. So 2 times 50 is 100. Subtract 11 should be 89. And then let's go 0. Because I like 0. 2 times 0 is 0. Minus 11 is negative 11. Alright. Uh, so use the role, use the role we wrote to, to class, to, uh, sorry, answer these two questions. So Zach has 5,052. So Nathan's score is equal to 2 times Zach's score, which is 5,072, uh, and then subtract 11. Can somebody got a calculator for this. Okay, so I'm going to type in 5,072 times 2 and get 10,144, subtract 11 off of that. And get 10,133. Now, certainly the rule made that faster. You could have used a table as well if you wanted to pattern it well. Um, but really, the rule is, is uh, the, the point of finding a rule is able to make those calculations much easier. So I strongly suggest finding using the rule. Let's go down to the next part. Ah, Sean. Sean mows lawns in the summer. He charges the same fixed amount for each lawn he mows. As of today, he's earned $36 after mowing three lawns. So here's the key thing here. We have a fixed amount, meaning that um, if I mow one lawn, I say charge $10. Two lawns becomes a multiplication problem, 10 times 2. So I should be able to uh, use this information to figure out the rule. So if three lawns equals $36, then one lawn should equal... Dun, 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 $12, okay? 
So that's going to be the rule that we're using in here in a second. So we need to create an input output table using the headings number of launch mode and the output uh, and the amount of money in dollars for the output, fill in the appropriate values for the situation, then fill in several other rows of information for the output, fill in the appropriate values for Sean's current situation, then fill in up oh wow. And then for example, what if Sean is one eight lines, twelve lines? Okay. That is bananas. So what I'm gonna actually do is make that right here. So I'm gonna set that up first. And I'm gonna actually set it up into three columns. This is gonna be the input, which is number of lawns mode. It's gonna be a process. And it'll just be over here, be the amount of money in dollars. Okay. So I'm gonna start it up by uh, just putting in some values, some number longs mode. Uh, two, three, and I'm gonna to skip to eight and twelve. And eight and twelve are coming from right here. And then I'm putting them out over here. Well, if you mowed no lawns, I know we had no dollars. We figured out the one lawn up here. One lawn should be twelve dollars. So if one lawn was twelve, two should be twenty-four. And the way I'm getting that is it's doubling, right? Or adding twelve, excuse me, each time. Okay. Now, the other thing to consider is a process going left and right is that we're always multiplying by 12. Um, and the way we can get that is 1, 0 goes directly to 0, which means there's no additional addition. 1 goes to 12, and the only way to go from 1 to 12 with no addition is to multiply by 12, which means that becomes our rule. So here's 2 times 12, 3 times 12. So this should be 8 times 12, and then 12 times 12. I know 12 times 12 is 144. And then 8 times 12 equals 96, okay? So here we have that. And so we talked a little bit about the pattern. Um, we have this idea of plus 12 every time. Okay? And then the rule works well simply because it fits all the values of the table I chose, including the ones that were given. Okay, so Sean wants to go to a two-day music festival in the summer. Tickets cost 190. How many long will Sean need to mow this summer to earn enough money to buy a concert ticket show if I the answer? Well, I know that the rule is that y is equal to 12 times x. Um, so there's a couple ways we can do this. We can simply um, continue our table on until we hit an appropriate value. Um, also, we can use this rule to help us figure that out. And what I mean is this. If I know that I'm trying to hit the target of 190, then that should be the same as 12 times the number of longs mode. Now, depending on how you want to solve this, uh, I'm going to use undoing, right? So 12 times a number is 190. So 12 times a number is 190. So that means that number divided by 12 should be x. Okay. So x is equal to 15.8 longs. Now, that doesn't make any sense because you can't mow part of a long to stop. So 16 longs is the answer. So we should be mowing 16 longs. Okay, the last two problems. I know it's getting a long video, guys. We're, we're, we're reaching the end here. The, stack, the steps of the magic number puzzle are so start, uh, pick a starting number, multiply by negative 3, then add 7. So follow, this, follow the steps, complete the step table. So the process is pick a number, multiply by negative 3, and then add 7. So that should be my process as well. So pick a number, multiply by negative 3, add 7. Pick a number, multiply by negative 3, x7. Pick a number, multiply by negative 3, x7. So it's a matter of picking numbers now. The numbers were picked for me, actually. Um, so let's uh, work this out. So we have negative 3 times 1, which should be a negative 3. Add 7 to that, you get a 4. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Add 7 to it, you get a 1. Now look at this. I'm seeing a kind of pattern in there, too. That is a minus three. So if this is a minus three, we're in business. Okay. Uh, let's see. Negative three times negative three is negative nine. Plus seven should be a positive. I'm sorry. Negative nine plus seven should be a two. Wait a minute. Oh, minus 2. I'm sorry. I don't know why it took me so long to process that. It should be negative 2. This is a negative 9. It adding 7 actually makes it a negative 2. Now it is dropping 3 more values. 
So dropping three more values should take us probably to a negative five. We'll see that works out. Here's a negative 12 at seven to it. You're doing that, you get a negative five. So it seems to me there's a couple different processes that we're going to pay attention to. One is look for table patterns going down your table, especially in any number. And maybe take a second to reflect where else you saw that number pop up. You saw me do that in the third problem, I think. And then finally, write the rule that represents the relationship between the starting number and the ending number uh, for the magic puzzle in number one. But look, again, since we wrote our process out, the rule is actually going to be written for us. Every single time there was a negative three, then we, we picked a number and then added seven. So that should be our rule. Okay. All I have to do is do input and output. We are good to go. Okay, guys, that was a long video. I'm sorry. Uh, that's how it is sometimes. I really apologize for this Percy Jackson thing happening behind me because it is just awful and incredibly distracting. So if I lost myself a few times in the video, I apologize.